good morning in the last class we have seen what is flexibility matrix what is flexibility influence coefficient now we will develop the flexibility matrix for given coordinate of the structures here i have shown you a cantilever beam and coordinate 1 and 2 are marked in the figure so you have to develop the flexibility matrix for the structure for this given coordinates 1 and 2 actually 1 represents unit force vertical force at point b and coordinate 2 means unit moment at point b so these are the force coordinates which are given to you you have to ask to develop the flexibility matrix since two coordinates are given the flexibility matrix will be a 2 by 2 matrix and it will be having the terms delta 1 1 2 1 1 and 2 2 so we have to develop the four flexibility influence coefficient terms for this what we have to do is first step you apply unit value in the coordinate direction 1 that is apply p1 unit force in this direction p1 equals 1 the beam will bend then the deflection in the direction 1 that is the vertical deflection that is delta 1 1 the vertical deflection at the point b that is vertical deflection of the displacement corresponding to the coordinate direction 1 is delta 1 1 displacement at 1 due to unit value of force h1 now this is coordinate 2 so let us mark the tangent to the square this is the horizontal direction this value this theta b that is delta 2 1 the displacement in direction 2 due to unit value of p1 so the first column of the flexibility matrix are delta 1 1 displacement in direction 1 due to unit load at 1 displacement in direction 2 direction 2 is rotational direction or the slope at b is delta 2 1 displacement in direction 2 due to unit load at 1 if you know these two values the first column can be filled you have studied in your mechanics of solids when a cantilever beam is subjected to a point load at the free end the deflection delta 1 1 and right here is displacement in coordinate direction one due to unit load in coordinate one so that is equal to we have studied in your mos w l q by 3 i since w is equal to 1 or p is equal to 1 this value is l q by 3 i and delta 2 1 is displacement here it is rotation or slope in direction 2 due to unit load in coordinate 1 when giving unit load in 1 what is the displacement in direction 2 here the displacement means direction 2 is rotation or slope the slope due to vertical load in a cantilever beam is w l square by 2 ei since w is 1 that is load is 1 it is l square by 2 ei so this is the first two elements or the column vector of the flexibility matrix similarly so this is obtained by applying p1 equal to 
1. Similarly, let us apply P2 is equal to 1. P2 means in this point B, you apply unit moment. Unit moment in this direction at point B. The beam deflects. So, the vertical deflection as well as the slope here. This vertical deflection is nothing but force displacement in direction 1 due to unit load at 2. When we give unit load in 2 direction, what is the displacement? Delta 1, 2. And this is delta 2, 2. Displacement in direction 2 due to unit load at 2. So let us write down these also. Apply P2 equal to 1. Delta 1, 2 is vertical displacement. in direction 1 due to unit load in direction 2. That is, when we give a moment m, the vertical displacement is ml square by 2ei. Since m is equal to 1, it is l square by 2ei. And delta 2, 2 is the slope or the rotation displacement in direction 2. Slow in direction 2 due to unit load at 2. When we give unit moment, the value of slope is L by EI, ML by EI. Since M is equal to 1, it is L by EI. Now, all these coefficients are arranged in a matrix form. So, we can write it here. First column, delta 1, 1. I will take EI outside, 1 by EI outside, LQ by 3. The second value, L square by 2. By giving P2 is equal to 1, L square by 2, L by EI. See, this is the flexibility matrix for the given coordinates. 1 and 2. By looking at the flexibility matrix, we can see that if it is a 2 coordinates are given, it will be a 2 by 2 matrix and it will be symmetric also. So, similar to the uh, stiffness matrix, the properties of the flexibility matrix are, it is a square matrix of order n, where n is the number of coordinates chosen for the problem. It is a square matrix. Second one, it is a symmetric matrix. It is symmetric, that is delta ij delta 1 2 2 1 will be the same as delta 1 2 that is delta ij will be the same as delta ji this is from the clark maxwell's law of reciprocal deflection if you give unit load at one point the deflection at second point that will be the same as if you give unit load at the second point the deflection at the first point so by the clark maxwell's reciprocal law of deflection this Flexibility matrix, the coefficient delta 2, 1, 1, 2 should be the same as delta 2, 1 or it is a symmetric matrix. And also always the elements in the lagrange will be positive because the displacement will be always in the direction of the load. So the three properties are it is a square matrix, a symmetric matrix and the diagonal elements are positive. So now these values for this particular example, WL square by 3EI, WL square by 2EI, ML square by 2EI, ML by EI, all these values are familiar to us or simple example. But how to calculate this if it's not easy to always uh, by heart the formulas. So we should have some tool to computation of displacements. For that we have used earlier the moment area method or unit load method or conjugate B method. Moment area method has some restrictions. The moment area theorem, the most theorem is based on the fact that the uh, difference in slope between two points is equal to area of the bending moment diagram. So that we have should have at least one point having zero slope. So for cantilever like structures, it is easy to use moment area method. But if it is simply supported beams with unsymmetrical loading, it is not easy to use the moment area method for computation of slope and deflection. 
So the easiest one which I feel is the unit load method. So the same example we will see how to use unit load method for computation of these values so that it can be generalized, you can use for any other numerical example. Okay, let us see how to develop the elements of the flexibility matrix or the derive the flexibility influence coefficients based on the unit load method. The principle of unit load method is delta ij is integral mi mj dx by ei. What is this mi and mj? Suppose I have two coordinates here, one and two. Mi represents the first coordinate direction, the bending moment diagram corresponding to the first load is called M1. So here I apply P1 equal to 1, the bending moment diagram with P1 equals 1 taking moment about this point, it will be 1 into L, this distance is L, so the bending moment value here is L. Since it moves up, I have marked it above the line, so this is a hogging moment diagram. This is called M1 diagram. Next, apply unit load in the second coordinate direction. Apply P2 is equal to 1. So, with reference to this, this goes up. So, the bending moment diagram, is, this is the bending moment diagram. 1 at here and everywhere it is 1. Whenever you take section, consider the height of it, bending moment everywhere is 1. So, this is called the M2 diagram. So, M1 diagram is corresponding to the first load, P1 equal to 1. M2 diagram is corresponding to the second load, P2 is equal to 1. Now, generalizing... This is the expression for bending moment you have to take. Consider a section and do the integration normally. But instead of doing this numerical integration, what we do is, we do a process called graphical integration. The graphical integration process is, draw the diagrams M1 and M2. Now, this instead of this integration, we can make use of this rule. This can be obtained as area of the first diagram. That is, if it is I, area of the MI diagram. If it is 1, M1 diagram. J. Second term represents ordinate of the second diagram where which point you have to take. The ordinate of the second diagram should be taken corresponding to the center of gravity of the first diagram. So, I will illustrate it this. Instead of doing this numerical integration, we can do graphical integration which is According to that, which you have to get delta 1, 1, the first coefficient of the flexibility matrix. Delta 1, 1 can be written as, this is 1, 1. So, M1, again M1, Ij. So, M1, M1, Dx by Ei. How will you calculate? M1, the first M1 represents area of this M1 diagram. Area of this M1 diagram is it's a triangle half base in the altitude. That is the area of the diagram. Second M1 represents ordinate of M1 diagram. Ordinate varies from here to here. At which point? Corresponding to the center of gravity. So, center of gravity of this figure is at a distance of two third L from here. From the vertex of the triangle, the center of gravity is at 2 third L. What is this ordinate? The ordinate at the center of gravity, L by L. So, at 2 third L, it will be 2 third L. So, area of the diagram in the ordinate of the same diagram at the center of gravity. So, it will give you the value LQ by 3 EI. M I M J D X by E I, so 1 by E I, area of the M1 diagram into ordinate of the M1 diagram at the center of gravity. So, we got the deflection due to vertical load is W L Q by 3 E I. Now, delta 1, 2, we have no, it's the same as delta 2, 1. So, that is equal to integral M2. M1, M2, M1, dx by EI. So, we have to do the integration. M2 expression 
M1 expression and integrate it. Instead of that, we can do graphical integration. That is, first comes M2. So, area of the M2 diagram, which is M2 diagram, this is M2 diagram. Area of the M2 diagram is, it's a rectangle 1 into L into ordinate of this M1 diagram corresponding to the center of gravity of this. Center of gravity of this figure is L by 2. It's a rectangle. So, the center of gravity is L by 2. At L by 2, what is this ordinate? Corresponding to L by 2, this ordinate is also L by 2. So, that into L by 2 will give you L square by 2i. Next, delta 2, 2. Integral m2, m2 dx by ei. So, that is equal to area of this m2 diagram. Area of this m2 diagram is 1 into L rectangle. Ordinate of the diagram at the center of gravity. Center of gravity is at L by 2. Here, everywhere the ordinate is 1. At the center of gravity, the ordinate is 1. So, it is L by E. Now, we write the flexibility matrix. F is equal to delta 1, 1. L cube by 3. I'll take 1 by E I outside. Delta 1, 2 as well as delta 2, 1 or L square by 2. And this is L. So, we have got the flexibility matrix which I have obtained earlier. So, this unit round method is a very easy method and it can be adopted for even beams with irregular loadings for simply supported beams, any eccentricity. Thank you.